today what we'll be installing is the Amphib Snorkel Low Mount from uh, Rugged Ridge Adventures. So this one is for the uh, JL Wranglers and JT Gladiator. So it'll be a snorkel that will actually go right over here. It's the low mount version uh, for actual better airflow. So let's see uh, what's, what do we have inside. So with the box open, you have the instruction manual. And uh, I would say that this actual install manual is one of the better ones from, uh, from being from a company that does for any type of modification. Next in the box. So this is uh, one of the snorkel pieces. Now what I would say is that from a quality wise, I think they could have done a better job with the actual silicone. You can see inside the silicone, it's not, uh, they didn't do a very good job with that. So I think they could have uh, improved that part a little bit. You have the grill that goes on the side of the vehicle for the actual snorkel itself in this box. So in the second box, you have, this is one of the pieces that connects from the front of the air box to the actual snorkel itself. You have a couple of silicone couplers. You have the actual piece that goes and replaces this bo the body panel right over here. That snorkel will actually go. And then you have some clamps, some hoses, clamps, and, uh, and gaskets in here. So what, what, if you follow the instructions, what we first need to do is actually remove this actual front bumper area so we can get access to uh, the bottom part of this actual air box. So you'll see you have these uh, rivets that uh, are plastic rivets and just use a pry tool to remove the top to remove that piece off. So once you remove it, that's what it looks like. And then you have to take this and remove this piece. That's what that looks like. Once removed, this front piece just lift up on this corner because you have these parts that are holding it slightly down. Do the same thing on the other side, lift up. So after the top part is unclipped, you have a couple of other clips on the bottom over here. So you just want to give it a uh, tug. If you want to see, here's the actual clips. You have a couple of these clips right over here. And then you have this clip that connects to the uh, right underneath the actual headlights. So now you need a T30 to remove this over here. T30 here just to loosen this. So when you actually take the T30 and you remove the screw in order to remove this inlet for the air to go in. Uh, we're actually gonna need a T15 and T15 to remove this. Once you remove the T15s over here, you have this duct that you can remove. And, uh, and now that you, you can put this T30 back on because you don't need this anymore. Now let's go ahead and uh, start removing the air box. So over here, to remove this cowl piece over here, you will need a 10 millimeter. So 10 millimeter to remove for this piece. Now for the rest of the actual air box, you actually need a eight millimeter. One hour later. remove this and remove the actual air box 
A few moments later. And then you see when you pull it up, you have these two rubber pieces that uh, hold them down. So with the T15s removed in the front, you can now remove this duct. So you pull up and they can slide this duct back out. More moments later. So to remove it, after you remove the T15 screws that you see right here, that's holding it to the front of the car, after you remove, when you pull this back out, just use a little bit of force and it'll come out. With the stock air box removed, you have these clips. They have to unclip to remove the side piece over here. And I can remove this piece off. On the stock air box, there's these uh, rubber pieces that you need to go put back onto the frame. So when you put the, the air box back after being modified, it will, uh, it will reseat back in. So the two pieces I took off, you put one in here and the other one goes right over here. And this middle one was originally for the, um, the actual duct that went down to the bottom over here that we removed with the two 15, T15 screws. So now, after removing this piece from the actual stock air box, um, we have a step bit here going up to five eighths of an, of an inch, and we're gonna drill a hole in here, and that's for the actual uh, drain plug over here. drain plug goes right in here like that now before we actually put this in we're gonna use silicone to make sure it has a good seal And then we're gonna spin this around so it gets into uh, this spot for drainage. So if you look at it, it'll actually look like this when it goes back into the air box, goes back into the actual engine bay, and you have a drain hole for the water to come out this way, like that. And uh, that's actually what it looks like on the inside. Now, once you have that set in the right position, you take the hex nut over here and you hold it in place. So now what you'll see is that you, uh, after installing the actual drain tube, you'll see there's actually four holes here and you actually plug them in with these plugs. So now that the, the plugs are plugged in, then the drain will, 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 be, will allow the water flow to come through over here. So now while we wait for the silicone to dry for the plugs and the drain in the stock air box, we're gonna come and start getting this side ready. We have to remove this panel and then trim a plastic piece over here. So we start by removing this uh, antenna. So after you remove the antenna, put it placed on the side, get a, a T40 and T40 will be able to remove 
this body panel right here. And that's uh, what it looks like from the four pieces. So over here. Now we'll move on to this piece and we'll get that trimmed off. So now, um, after removing this pan body panel over here, um, we lifted the hood all the way back just to give us more clearance. So with this piece, this piece is actually glued on right over here. So we'll just uh, undo it. It's glued on the bottom. So um, this top part over here is actually glued. On this side, they actually have a, uh, a plug over here that holds it in place, but there's actually no place, there's no way to get to it from the inside over here, as you can see. So what we actually need to do is to trim off this actual corner piece right here, this piece right over here. So I'm gonna use a Dremel to do that. So you get that cut down over there and then you want to go across the line over here. So I, I know I might be blocking the screen, but the best way probably to do it is probably upside down this way. So get that cut over there, just following that line across. So now to ensure to do a test fit against that spot, slide this piece in, take a look, and uh, you have the clearance that you need. Just like that. Snorkel over here that works. Um, make sure that this cut was good. Then we're gonna go remove this 10 millimeter nut right here over here, because this piece actually touches the bottom of the actual snorkel. So you see that this uh, that eight millimeter, you could actually see that it's actually touching this a little bit when we did the test fit. So we removed the eight millimeter uh, as per the instructions. So now when you slide this back in into that spot, then the bottom over here, there's clearance that's not touching over here. So now that we have the uh, snorkel in, we'll uh, put these uh, T40s back. So now that we have this uh, snorkel piece on, we're gonna assembly the, assemble the rest of it. So you have this piece of the actual um, part that goes over here that goes into the actual stock airbox. So this goes into, this side goes into the airbox. So this over here goes into a stock airbox this way. So now we need to put this gasket on. gasket and that and you see this little clip it on just like that now next is to uh, complete the uh, drain plug the rest of the piece for the drain plug so now we're going to assemble the tubing for the drain so you slide the tube over the other side, you have the other side to it. Slide that over. And then you can just tighten it. So with this uh, hose clamp on, uh, make sure that you let, loosen this up for it to be in the open position uh, as recommended by the manufacturer. 
And then lastly is uh, for this mounting point over here, you should need, you need to push this through this in. <laughs> lastly, for this mounting piece, you have to push this in over here. And that completes the uh, uh, assembly of the uh, stock airbox. So now we're gonna put the stock airbox back in. Now remember, we had removed the actual rubber, rubber pieces from over here, so this goes back into that spot. And then once that's in, we're gonna put the filter back on. And uh, if you've uh, driven your car for a while, this is a good time to have the uh, filter uh, replaced. Uh, with a newer with a newer filter. So in this scenario, we're actually going to replace it with a newer filter. Put the air box back on. Put the hoses back on and then start tightening everything back up. We'll start with the uh, 10 millimeters that go over here. Make sure when you're installing this back on that the filter's on the inside and you have a good seating of the actual air box itself. So to uh, install this piece in here, you have the two silicone couplings. Uh, make sure you have the shorter one facing the front of the car and the longer one in the back of the car. And then for this actual piece, you'll see this notch over here. This one means it's pointing to the actual front here. Now, if I were to do this over again, I would recommend just taking this off, taking this off, um, building it first, and then putting it back in because it just seems easier than trying to fit this on um, at this point over here. Now, um, we decided to put the actual screws on the top over here for easy access. Of course, if it was on the bottom side, let's just say it was on the bottom over here, you have the cleaner look. But when you look at the back side over here, you have barely any clearance. So just to be safe, we're gonna have it uh, face up this way. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use um, some speed shine uh, just to add some lubrication in the front and the back right here. And what I did notice is that doing this, uh, putting the silicone on, on the actual longer tube here first, you actually have a little more room to maneuver. And this rear, this front piece actually have to get the, I would say, inside edge first, because that side you don't have uh, much visibility, and then uh, get to the side that's closer to the uh, fender afterwards. Just wiggle it back and forth to get the uh, silicone tubing on. And then to have the silicone tubing on. Slide the clamp back over, clamp over. And then now you tighten it.
Now, one thing I would say is that if you notice where this actually is, it's actually over the uh, fuse box. So if you had to replace any fuses, uh, that, that might be a little bit of a challenge. So as you see, uh, I, have, I had removed the actual 10 millimeter that's over here. So I gotta put that back in. Um, as you can see in this video, uh, or this scene, you have this, these clips. We move the actual screws to the bottom over here because when we actually close the hood, it actually gets uh, the top, if the screws are on top, it actually hits the actual uh, the sound deadening material up over here. So we actually had to uh, undo it and remove it. And undo it, we just took the screws off, took the full bracket off and then reroute it underneath and then tighten them back on with a long screwdriver. Um, just watch out that on this side over here, there's a uh, very little clearance. So just, uh, we just hand tighten with the, uh, with the, with the screwdriver. So we ended up tightening all the actual clamps. And now for the finishing piece, for the actual snorkel. So you have this cover right over here. You have uh, four screws that go on top. As this is plastic, I would just say hand tighten. You don't have to go too crazy on getting it too tight. You don't wanna break the actual plastic. So now you actually need to put the front bumper back, match on the bottom, the actual clips, push it in. And then now it's just putting the actual plugs back in on the top. Just make sure that when you put these plugs back in, that you follow the orientation. If you look at the actual plug over here, you'll see that has a matching groove over here that goes in. So when you put that in, just uh, be mindful about that. So a couple items that if I had to do this over again, I would make some recommendations. When you put the uh, the air box, you drill the hole for the drain plug in the air box. Make sure it's on the actual flat surface area, so that the nut will hold on, hold on, and grip on tight. That it'll be it'll be level. So if you look at uh, the position in the actual um, manual, it's not the I wouldn't say it's the best um, location. If you were to do that, when you actually put on these uh, silicone couplings, um, I would recommend actually doing it off the ground first instead of installing the, the actual um, panel over there, I would probably do the install um, for all of this first um, on the ground and then put this in place. And that way you have leverage to uh, slide the actual silicone um, couplings on before tightening. Um, I'll say those are the probably two, uh, two things that if I had to do this over again, uh, I would probably um, redo from that aspect. Um, but otherwise, install is fairly simple. Uh, it's not complex. Uh, just uh, these little items that um, if they told you in, at first, it'd probably be uh, easier that way. So hopefully um, everyone learned on some of our mistakes and improvements in terms of insulation process from this video. So in, if you uh, were to start the actual engine and then you want to step on, the, uh, step on the gas, you'll see that there's suction going in. You can see that there's suction of it going in. And that's how you know that the installation was actually done successfully, that there's no leaks and that there is, uh, there's enough, there's suction for the air to go inside.
Hi, this is Future Scott. I do have some thoughts about the system here. I think the main benefits is that it looks stock. There's no cutting of the body panels. It does increase the water line. It brings in cooler air and you could bring the system through a car wash. I think overall, the only negative is the cost of the system. It is quite expensive. What the system brings to your Jeep is the main benefit of being able to go to the different stages. Now with just changing out four screws, you can add the high mount, and then on top of that, you can add the pre-filter system. And with the four screws, you can easily go back to a low mount. So when you're doing your urban driving, you don't have to worry about the noise that the mount will have. And then when you get a chance to go off road for the special days, you can add the high mount. Hi, this is George. Thanks for watching City Crawlers. Hit that like button, please subscribe and share this video. If you have any questions for myself or Scott, ask them below. As always, all the details and links are below in the description.